This piece is called Silent Recordings and as you say it's um, the, the primary building block of the piece is the 78 record and of course um, well records generally have become sort of redundant now there's so many new ways of recording sound digitally digitally um, and um, but I still enamoured by the, the physical object and, and the fact that this object once contained a voice. And the 78 record is really interesting because record players now, you still can get record players and they have um, 33 and a third and they have 45, but the 78 speed has seemed to have dropped off the map. So you have these, these kind of disembodied voices trapped on this material that nobody really uses anymore. They know there's a voice there, but they know, but they can't sort of play it. So this is a way of kind of giving um, a visual uh, signal to that, that sort of lost voice. And I think my work's about that sort of lost voice, the, the notion of trying to remember something that's barely there anymore. So the idea is I've, I've cut the labels out of these 78 records and I've cut them, cut along the tracks and made different sort of patterns within the tracks and then sort of pushed them into a sort of gluey resin so you get this kind of red ooze almost like some sort of prime prime primordial sludge coming through the record and and then made these little sculptural pieces inside so it's kind of like a little time tunnel and then but I've still tried to reference the actual um, the actual label and and tell stories about sound and and about remembering I suppose and about the disembodied voice so here we go I can open drawers like that so it's uh, so in a way they're sort of all of my pieces are about a filing cabinets and about keeping records so to actually use a physical record to me seemed an obvious way and also there's a connection to traditional furniture making um, like French polish is, is primarily a shellac based finish on, on colonial furniture and of course the 78 records are primarily shellac as well so this, this is me being very traditional here. So, so you, you have a technology here that um, was once ubiquitous Yes. and in a way still left a residue in second hand shops and basements and attics all around the world yeah. and which now, and which has completely fallen silent. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and I think that's, that's what cabinets sort of become. They become this sort of uh, uh, place that residue builds up. <laughs> you open a drawer and think, oh, look at that. <laughs> I used to wear that once. Yeah. Why, did, why did I keep it? Yeah, exactly. So, um, so that, that's kind of the whole notion of it, really. It, um, a way of filing and sorting your memories and... Um, yeah, trying to make sense of a world that constantly moves ahead of you and you can never stand still in. Yeah, the technology is redundant and one day we all will be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
of how we work as human beings. Basically, we take stories and we take influences and they become somehow uh, absorbed into us and, it, and we change the meanings of those stories by how we place them next to other beliefs and other stories so, and make a new pattern, a fresh pattern from, from things that are already existing. So that's the idea of stack. And what I've done here is I've, I've painted words on each of these lin linen cupboards and um, basically if you read them in a certain way they'll make sense and if you read them in another way they won't <laughs> and that's kind of how stories are it's kind of it's it's the angle or the the way that you um you look at something that that gives it its meaning well i'm standing in front of a, a piece that i'm very happy to say the um tasmanian museum and art gallery have, have bought this is um called depth of field and um it's made from 2,400 slides, old slide mounts. Um, and again, we were talking about redundancy before. This notion of capturing an image with a slide is something that's, that's gone. You know, even the great um, Eastman Company um, have stopped making slide film anymore. So, um, so again, it's about this, this idea of photography being something that's stable. Oh, it's just turned off. <laughs> being um, being something that's permanent, um, but it's not really. It's all about just capturing that instant, and you don't know what's happened before that instant and what's happened after that instant. And perhaps it's this kind of human desire to try and stop time, to sort of put this little sheet anchor into the slipstream of time that just constantly jets past us and we can't stop it. So this is my piece a bit about those sort of themes. So the, the, you can see with the lights off this figure that is kind of like a, um, sort of like a nervous system sort of superimposed over the top of all this grid of slides. And then, um, and there's like 800 slides on the surface, but that 800 slides is um, three slides deep. And um, so, on the slides beneath the surface, I've actually just put cotton and bits of wire and bits of lace. And then when, when you animate that with a, a moving light behind the piece, you get this kind of funny shifting, unsettling sort of an, um, an idea. Well, you can, see, um, you can see these little sections here, you know, so you can see um, wire slowly moving. And sometimes it goes into focus and sometimes it doesn't. And that's kind of how our recall and our memory works. Sometimes it's crystal clear, sometimes it's fuzzy, sometimes it's not there at all. And uh, as we move through life and more experiences accumulate and build on top of old ones, um, yeah, you get this kind of fading and focus. And there's bits of various text written on the slides. You know, I love looking at the, um, <laughs> I love looking at at slides and, and seeing what people have written, you know, like me at the beach, you know, on a sunny day. So it's those kind of comments, those kind of, um, those kind of holding on to, to sort of lost sunny days that this is about, really. Um, this is a piece called When My Heart Stops Beating. Actually, it's half of the When My Heart Stops Beating. Um, this was originally, um, commissioned for the opening of Mona, the uh, Museum of Old and New Art um, by David Walsh. And um, so this was half of it. And then the other half had this scale again with um, sort of moving records, but just logistics, we thought we'll just go with half. <laughs> and this is the talking half. So these are all drawers made out of um, LP records and I've sort of put these sort of um, faces in behind where the label would be and then reprinted the label transparently so it's like a little window and you get these sort of ghostly faces sort of peering out and it's almost like they're their own little private universe the, um, and e each person is I suppose a universe in themselves and and we sort of extend out into the world and mix into other people's universes but this one talks um, it sort of says, I love you. So if you open up the drawers, I love you. 
you'll get a voice saying, I love you. So if you opened up all of them, you'd get a little symphony of drawers saying the same thing. Um, this is a lovely one. And then each of these drawers contains like a little printed story as well as the sound. Um, so you could, and so if you wanted to read the stories, you slide yourself along on this, this ladder and you can risk life and limb and um, open up some more. So you get this little symphony of uh, disembodied voices. <laughs>